We have a new schedule, and we are still getting accustomed to our new schedule. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today. And uh, let us uh, just move right now to the Word of God. How about that? Let's go to the Scriptures together, please. If you need an outline this morning, we'll be happy to serve one to you. And uh, otherwise, you can watch on the screens today. We'll beginning with one, be beginning with one little verse of Scripture from Mark chapter 5. Verse 19, and this little word from Jesus to a man who had just been healed, go home. Everybody say, go home. home. Now, I know that that some of you probably have heard people say, go big or go home. That's not the go home we're talking about. How many of you know sometimes we need to do business at home? And so we're beginning this morning a five-week sermon series dedicated to to spring house cleaning. Some of you are moaning and groaning already. Spring house cleaning. Thank you to all of those who filled in preaching, Pastor Lisa, Pastor Bob, while I've been on vacation this week. It has not been the best vacation. I painted my deck this week. And so I was involved in a little of those kind of house project. How many of you know when there's no honey at home, you got to do the honeydew projects anyway? (laughs) And this week I've been involved in some of those kinds of things. Today we're going to start a sermon series about spring house cleaning. Our goal over these next few weeks is to urge every family, every household, uh, whether you're single and live by yourself or husband and wife living with an empty nest or a family with kids at home, or maybe you're the Waltons here with us today and your household consists of four generations with aunts and uncles and third cousins twice removed, or, and, and a few gerbils and cats and dogs along the way. Whatever the status of your home, we're urging every Christian family to make a fresh, concerted effort to do some spring house cleaning, some as I've heard some people refer to it, do some deep cleaning and make your home sparkle and shine. How many of you feel good when the house is clean? Oh, yeah. We're urging everybody to make your house sparkle and shine. Of course, we're talking about spiritual house cleaning in this series of messages, cleaning out and cleaning up the Christian home. Our starting scripture for this series comes from that powerful story in Mark chapter 5 where Jesus delivered a demon-possessed man and healed him, set him free. Jesus set the man free and healed him. The man was so impressed that he wanted to follow Jesus in the ministry. But Jesus said to the man, no, go home. Go home. Your home has been neglected, and you need to go home and put it in order by telling what great things Jesus has done for you. Go home, said Jesus. We begin today with our first lesson entitled, Jettison the Junk. Anybody have a little bit of junk at home that uh, maybe could stand to be uh, cast out like a devil? from your home. Jettison the junk. I want to remind you today, please remember everybody, that this is a five-week, Lord willing, a five-week sermon series, and we won't cover everything today. But we'll get started this morning with some important principles about dedicating our homes to the glory and the purposes of God. Spring house cleaning number one, jettison the the junk. Get the junk out of the house. That's today's message. Every good house cleaning starts with getting rid of the garbage. To start our message and really to start our series today, let's examine together point number one, the purpose and potential of a Christian home. Look at me, everybody, and listen to me now. The Christian home is intended to be a very special, sacred place. Not like the homes of this world. The Christian home is to be indwelt by the presence and the power of God. 
As we think about that, we remember Jesus' words in Luke chapter 10 when he sent out his disciples and said, when you enter a house, first say to this house, peace to this house, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Everybody say, say these words with me. Peace to this house. Peace Peace to this house. That is one of the first declarations of the gospel in Jesus' ministry. Peace to this house. And for every Christian believer, there ought to be the privilege of experiencing a house filled with the peace of God. Now, there are many things that can disrupt that, but the desire of the heart of God, and certainly the desire of Christians, real Christians, is that their homes be places of peace. A Christian home is intended to be a harbor from the wicked winds of this world. When everything else around is blowing you around and battering you around and beating you up, How many of you know you shouldn't have to be beaten up at home if you're a Christian in a Christian home? The the Christian home should be a place that harbors you from the wicked winds of this world. And it's to be a hospital for healing from the wounds of this world where people who are injured can experience the healing power of the presence of Jesus and the love of a God-believing family. A family that will stand together in tough times, will believe together in prayer, will encourage and strengthen one another. We'll talk about more of those things in a a later message in this series. A home where the presence of God is working and the peace of God and the power of God is working through the family members toward one another. Thirdly, the purpose and potential of a Christian home is to be a haven from the worthless wisdom of this world. That's where we're going to jump off today for a little bit as we want to make the declaration that the junk that flows around in the world today should not be given liberty to flow and to prevail and to permeate the atmosphere of our Christian homes. Could I have a better amen? Amen. There's a, there, there's a lot of stuff moving about the worthless wisdom of this world. It's all over. There, there are false teachings, false doctrines, wrong philosophies, wrong belief systems all over the world today. Our Christian homes should be places where we can experience freedom and rest from those things and where we can receive the truth of the word of God. So the purpose of a Christian home is pretty clear. It's to be a a place where God's people can refresh together as families and can be strengthened in the Lord. Unfortunately, many Christian homes today are being poisoned by the influx of the stuff of this world. It's as if, listen, how many of you have ever had your air conditioning on and somebody stood at the door with the door wide open and you said, close the door? Shut the door, please. You, and and there, there, there are two, I suppose you could see it from two different perspectives. You, you could either say you're letting all the cool out or you could say you're letting all the heat in. But whatever is happening, there's a, there's a transfer of atmospheres and environments that, that take place when we're allowing things into our homes. David, my brother, I hope you're... I, I never ask permission of my family to provide illustrations using them. How many of you know that's just part of it? David said that last week their air conditioner went out for, for a couple days. They opened the windows. They brought in, they, uh, they turned on fans. They brought in the air from the outside. And David said before long, the entire house was, co- the inside of the house, everything was covered with pollen. If David and Brenda seem a little sluggish today, that's why. (laughs) Everything in the house. When you bring in the stuff from the outside, it has the power to affect what's inside. You can imagine what all that pollen does on the inside. Well, 
Unfortunately, many Christian homes have opened their doors wide, their windows, all of their receptacles to the stuff of the world and the stuff of the world is coming into their homes. These are days of streaming things into our homes. If you are streaming things into your home, I just have to ask the question today, is the stream a dirty river? One of my favorite places to go on vacation, as you know, where I did not go this past week, are the Smoky Mountains. I remember one childhood vacation to the Smoky Mountains. I learned to love the Smoky Mountains because that's where mom and dad chose to take us as kids on a regular basis. We love those mountains. I remember one particular vacation. One of the places where we loved to go was up to the, up to the, the, the chimneys picnic area and play in the river, the mountain river that flows down through that. But that year, the Little Pigeon River had been declared contaminated. And nobody was allowed to play in the water in the river that year. Taking that part of the vacation away was a real sad chapter for us as kids in the Smoky Mountains. But when the river is contaminated, you're likely to become sick yourself if you allow yourself to swim in it or to drink from it. And for Christian homes, there is streaming into our homes a variety of input and information, all kinds of things. And we have to ask ourselves, are we streaming godly or ungodly content into our homes? Listen to Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 26. This is a word from the law of Moses, but it's a principle that we need to learn. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it, for it is set apart for destruction. Look at the first part of that verse. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house. Boy, that's a good word for us in the world in which we live today. I want to think about some of the feeds that come into our house today as we, as we think about the poisoning of some Christian homes. First of all, there is the tantalizing temptations on television. Now, television sort of is, is old news today in the year 2022, but I found that most people still watch television. They have a television in the house. The difference for most people today is that the television is larger than it used to be. And whatever the source of the input from which you draw things in, it comes across on the television. And the television is is a tool for both good and evil. We're going to talk today about some conduits of information, and and the conduit itself is, is not necessarily evil. It's the content that comes through the conduit that can be either good or evil television. Television brings news into our homes and into our lives, news both real and fake. I've learned that you can't trust much that's on the news these days. You know, we as Missourians, we, we, we understand why a long time ago somebody said, we're the show me state, you're going to have to show me, because... Uh, you, we hear information that is some true, some false, some a mixture of things. Everything, there's a spin on everything. Television brings news. It brings entertainment. It brings the philosophies of this world. It showcases the lifestyles of this world. Television programs have been maneuvered over time, not only to reflect the culture, but even to produce the culture, I believe and to promote particular lifestyles that we would consider as as Bible-believing Christians to be sinful lifestyles, to promote those things as normal and perhaps even commendable. Television brings all of those kinds of things. Television engages the minds and spirits of Christians. A couple of weeks ago, Dr. Westlake did a good job explaining the relationship between the the soul and the spirit and the body, and the reality is you cannot feed your mind without affecting your spirit. That's part of the process 
of, of, of change that takes place. It begins in the mind and it, it, it seeps and settles into our spirits and it changes our lifestyles. Television provides all kinds of opportunities, both good and evil. Romans 1.32, a scripture verse I memorized as a teenage Bible quizzer, says, although those sinners know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Maybe they would not do something themselves, but they approve of those who practice them. Maybe you wouldn't do the things that you watch people do on television, but you take entertainment from those television shows, from those scenarios, as you become entangled and entwined in all of those thought processes. And suddenly your mind begins to soften, your spirit begins to change, your opinions, your conclusions begin to change based on the input that you have been continually feeding yourself. Television, there's the witchery, secondly, of the World Wide Web. This all mixes together because I know, you know, some television comes in through, the, it's, all, it's all mixed together, all of these sources of, of input. The internet brings all those things into the home as well, along with every platform of social media. Again, it's the content, not the technology, but are you listening to me this morning? I find it strange that Christian believers like so many things that they would never do or say themselves. Are you here? Well, I want to support them by pressing. I would not like something that was ungodly or wicked. That's not a good Christian testimony. I said that's a bad Christian testimony. Yeah. To like some, some false statement or, or, or some, some filthy language or something that's inappropriate. That's, the Christian doesn't like those things. What, what are we called to do with those things? We're called to, called to abhor and utterly detest those things. We don't have to become, we don't have to enter into warfare against everything we don't agree with, you know, with somebody online, but we don't have to express our approval of things. And, and social media platforms involve all of those things. People have all of these apps. I, I, I have chosen myself not to, not to be on those things just because, not because I'm, I'm necessarily boycotting the platform, but, but, but because I only have so much time to respond to things. And, but but I, I have found that people have all of these apps that bring in all of these things. Years ago, I had a, a staff member who had a phone on his desk and about every about every like three minutes his phone was dinging and he would pick up the phone look at it and you know all through the work day every, every, and I found out ultimately I said what is all, all that going on well he had all kinds of apps and all kinds of notifications set up and every three or four minutes he was getting a notice about a football game or, or some kind of a you know something he was involved in constant 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 input and people are involved in all kinds of things they watch things flow you, you think about you think about a river flowing as we talked about a moment ago, you talk about a river flowing, many of those kinds of things, a river of information. Those apps are intended to, to just feed and stream a river of information past you at all times. You can, you can swim in the river. You can uh, dangle your feet in the river. You, you can drown in the river if you're not careful. As all of this flows past you and all of it is coming in into your minds and into your Spirits, both the good and the bad. And the reality is there's so much 
negative. The devil is at work in the day and age in which we are living to sow into our minds and into our spirits things that are wicked, things that are false, things that are damaging, things that are destructive, and things that ultimately could be deadly to a Christian believer. Are you here? There's thirdly the mesmerizing manipulation of music as well. Music can be good or bad. I love music. I listen to music all the time at home. But if you're listening to the wrong music, you're listening to things that promote ungodly lifestyles. Uh, Again, we've got to test the content of all these things. Do they please God or grieve God? Are are you awake this morning? Is the, the stream that is flowing into your home Does it please God or does it grieve God? Some of you are saying right now in your own minds to justify yourself perhaps, you're saying, well, it's all out there and it's all coming in. If we turn anything on, we just have to take what comes. Wrong. You have a door. Huh? You have a door. You have a, (laughs) let's see if you remember this one. You have a knob right? You have a remote, right? You have a power cord, right? You say, well, how urgent should we be about about those kinds of things? As urgent as you want to be about making your home a godly home. It's your choice. Some Christian homes have been poisoned by the damage and destruction of drinking and drugging. Proverbs 20, wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. We know that drinking and drugging destroys many homes. I'm going to say this plainly today. There is no positive spiritual benefit to drinking and drugging in the home. There's no positive benefit. You say, well, you know, it makes me feel a little relaxed. To have, have a drink. Well, try, try being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the Apostle Paul's word. Don't get drunk with wine, which leads to sinful living, but be filled with the Spirit. If you need a drink, if you think you need a drink as a Christian, then you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know the Word of God. What you need is the work of God in your life, the help of the Holy Spirit. And the reality is the impact on children and the lessons they learn from a home that engages in those kinds of things often leads to great, great destruction and devastation. I have said it many times down through the years, what parents do in moderation, children often do in excess. And if you're not careful, the seed you sow will produce a horrible harvest. Isn't that right? How many of you know by your own yard work that one dandelion can lead to a messed up yard? And then, of course, as we think about the poisoning of the Christian home, we, we have to think about the sabotage of sexual sin. Ephesians 5, 3 says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place. Everybody say, out of place. Those things are out of place for your home, Christian. Out of place. But rather, there ought to be a spirit of thanksgiving and godliness in the home. Sexual sin in the home pollutes the home. Sexual sin like adultery, like living together in an unmarried relationship, like indulgence in pornography, like filthy talk and filthy joking, all of those kinds of things pollute a home. 
Christians' homes these days are homes where all kinds of trash and garbage from the devil has invaded and has been given liberty, but we ought to be, as the children of God, as the people of God, we ought to rise up and declare, not in my house. Not in my house. The poisoning of a Christian home leads to the perils of a Christian home. Deuteronomy 22, verse 8. I heard someone mention this little word from the law a couple of, well, it was Dr. West like a couple of weeks ago. He referred to this little unusual word from the law of Moses. This, I don't read this because we need to follow this literally, but it certainly produces a principle that is good for us. And here it is. Look at, look at Deuteronomy 22, 8. When you build a new house, Make a parapet around the roof or a fence around the roof of your house so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if someone falls from the roof. Isn't that unusual? But the point there is this. Don't let your home be a place where people are going to get hurt unnecessarily. Put some safeguards in place so that your home is not a dangerous place. Amen. Amen. So let's think about the perils of the Christian home if we allow these poisons to take over and to take control. First of all, there's the danger of spiritual dirtying and defiling. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 says, Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. The reality is what fills your home can either welcome or hinder the presence and the power of God in your home. How many of you, when you're sick, you want the healing power of Jesus to be working in your home? Huh? Yeah? How many of you, when you've got struggles and strife at home, you want the power of God to be bringing supernatural peace in the midst of that. How, how many of you want the blessings of God to flow in your home? Well, what you allow into your home will either facilitate the work of God or it will hinder the work of God in your home. The presence and the work of God. Your home becomes a dirty, defiled place if you allow all of those poisons to take over. Second, there is the danger of spiritual deception and demonic doctrines. First Timothy 4, 1 says, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. If we allow all kinds of wrong <laughs> pictures and thinking and teachings and philosophies to flow into our homes, it's no wonder that the members of our households become deceived by the work of the devil. Huh? He said, I can't, I can't believe that, that my kids would believe such things. Well, well, did you welcome that stuff into your home on a regular basis? Did, you say, well, we wouldn't have that stuff in our home. Did you welcome it through television, through the internet, through all kinds of things like that? Did you welcome the promotion of all kinds of wicked lifestyles through the media you brought into your home, through the movies that you chose to watch? You say, well, I can't believe my, my, my kids have started cussing and using real foul language. Did you listen to all that in the TV programs and the movies you watched? In your, did you promote that by welcoming that into your house? I'm just preaching this morning, folks. Don't get mad at me. You reap what you sow. I can't believe my son wrecked the car drunk last night. Well, did you teach him drinking a little bit was okay? Did, did, you, have, did you have that trash in your refrigerator so that he, he looked at that and was tempted by that and thought, well, if they, you know, if they, if they think it's okay, what do you expect? Amen. Right. I said, what do you expect? You planted the seed. You said, I didn't plant that seed. You welcomed the seed to be planted right in your home. 
You said, come on in, junk of the world. Come on in. Come on in. You bought a good speaker system so all that trash could be loud and clear in the home. I believe in having a good music. I have a great music system in my house. And I'm telling you, when, 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 I, when I play Thank You Jesus for the Blood Applied in my house, it booms like a gospel river all through my home. I love it. But you welcome things into the home. You're going to reap what you sow. Thirdly, there is the danger of spiritual distraction and diversion. Paul said in his last letter, Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Demas left the ministry because he was too wrapped up in the world. And there is the danger in the Christian home of just, of just removing our minds and our thought processes from the things of the Lord onto all of the stuff of this world, sometimes not even negative things, sometimes just all kinds of neutral stuff, 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 stuff that fills up all of our time and all of our voids and all of our spaces and all of our thought processes, all of those things just flood in and suddenly you don't have time to read your Bible. Distraction. There is much need today to keep the minds of Christians stayed on the Lord. When your minds begin to stray, your life begins to change. Are are you here? When your mind begins to stray, your life begins to change. All of these things ultimately lead to the danger of spiritual death and destruction. Galatians 6, 8 says, the one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And the truth is, you will either reap spiritual harvests and benefits in your home or you will reap secular worldly harvests. And the Lord, even, even today in this message, The Lord sets before us life and death and says, choose life. Choose life. Some of you here under the sound of my voice, even in an 830 service, perhaps have been too loose in allowing poisonous things to come into your home. I charge you and challenge you this morning to get a grip because you're going to reap what you sow. Some of you might say, well, my kids are all grown, so, you know, it's just, it's just me and it's just us, so it, it doesn't matter what we, what we watch or do. Wrong. How many of you understand that in every stage of life, we are called to be growing in the Lord and being transformed and conformed into the image of Jesus? And how many of you know that a Christian believer, whether in a, a big group or, or by himself or herself at home, how many of you know a Christian believer is called to live a life that is glorifying to God and pleasing to God? So we think about the purpose and potential of a Christian home, the poisoning of a Christian home, the perils to a Christian home. And lastly this morning, let's think about the powering of a Christian home. How many of you understand today that God wants this church to be filled with the power of his presence? Say amen. And then how many of you believe God wants your home to be filled with that as well? Yeah. You can experience the presence of the Lord just as much at home as you do here in church. Our homes should be sanctuaries for the presence of the Lord. So let's think think about spiritual power for a Christian home. Seven simple steps. This has been a fast message, hasn't it? Think about these seven simple steps to powering up a Christian home. Number one, get the garbage out of the house. 
2 Corinthians 7, 1, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So the first word here about getting the power of God back in your home is to get rid of the sinful content. Don't compromise. Are you here? I feel like you're all mad at me today. Don't compromise. Get the junk out of the house. Don't compromise. You say, well, it won't hurt me. Or you say, well, that doesn't bother me. Well, if, if, if ungodly, rotten things don't bother you, you need a new botherer. You've got something wrong with you, Chris. Listen, if you're not convicted by, by having a bunch of junk just flow through, given permission and freedom to flow through your home and through the, the ears and the minds and the spirits of the people in your household, if that doesn't bother you, then you need to get right with God. Because that means the Holy Spirit is not bringing the conviction that he is intended to bring it. And listen, in the world in which we live, there is no substitute for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The word of God and the conviction of the Holy Spirit, there's no substitute for that. We need that. We need to be bothered. When someone uses the Lord's name in vain, that needs to bother us. Now, again, we're not called to, to, to go out and, and fight against all of these sinners, you know, to... to, to that, that, that's not our call is to share the gospel and the good news of Jesus. Then teach people the word of God so people can grow up and be who. But, but as a child of God, when people use filthy language or use the Lord's name in vain or tell a dirty joke or say something racist or, or whatever it might be, that ought to bother us. We ought to sense the, the, the check of the Holy Spirit on that. And we certainly don't want to just invite and entertain that stuff. So we've got to get the garbage out of the house. No substitute for that, number one. Number two, get some spiritual government in the house. Somebody in the home has to rise up and be a spiritual leader. And hear me now, if you are a single person like me and you're the only one living in your home, you need to be a leader for yourself. Notice what the Lord said in Genesis 18. He said, I have chosen Abraham so that he, he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. <clears throat> now, think about this with me. I know that the scriptures, you know, speak about the husband rising up and being a strong spiritual leader. Sometimes the husbands are just wimpy. And they won't, be a, they won't rise up to their, God, their, their place of being a, a godly leader. Everybody say, not the men of our church. Come on, not the men of our church. The men be spiritual leaders, but the women need to be spiritual leaders as well. And if, the man, if, if a man won't be a spiritual leader, leadership has to come from somewhere. The woman ought to grab her husband by the elbow and say, come on, honey, it's time to do devotions. Huh? This is a Christian home. Well, I can tell this sermon's going over like a lead rock today. Somebody has to rise up and be a spiritual leader. Get some spiritual government in the house. Thirdly, get some spiritual goals in the house. <clears throat> declare, declare we want this to be a Christian family, a Christian home, a God-honoring home. So make some spiritual plans and move in that direction. J Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, you knew we'd get around to this verse somewhere or another in this series. Joshua said, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve. 
serve the Lord. Joshua is saying, if you think it's too hard to serve the Lord, that's your business. But I, I urge you to choose well because the choices you make are going to have repercussions in this life and in eternity. Choose well. If you don't want to serve the Lord, then so be it. God has given you that choice. But if you're, how many Christians do we have in the house today? Lift your hand and say amen. If you're going to serve the Lord, do it with your whole heart and with your whole home. Yes. Get some spiritual goals in the house. We're going to start, we're going to start having a prayer time. We're going to start doing this, that, and the other. We're going to make some plans. Fourthly, get some spiritual guards in the house. Establish commitments and safeguards and accountability for yourself and for your household. Some of you have security systems that guard your physical house, but you don't have any spiritual security systems. And the danger of spiritual listen, the danger of spiritual home invasion is just as real as the danger of physical home invasion. Huh? Get some safeguards in place. Job said, I love this word from Job 31, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl. I made a covenant. And 2 John 10 says, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, the teaching of the gospel, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. So, in, in other words, d don't, don't let things in, into the house that are going to corrupt the house. Keep them out of the house. If you want to, you know, keep them out of the house. Don't just say to anything, come on in here. Come on in. If you had an old, when I was a kid growing up, we had a, our house was not what, what was serviced by the public sewer, but we had down over the hill an old sewage lagoon, okay? And we had a beagle. <laughs> and she ran free in the neighborhood. And every now and then, our little beagle would come up on the deck with a green liquid haze <laughs> all over her, covered in sewage from the lagoon. Her name was Pebbles. She'd come up with that green, slimy soot all over her, and we would say, come on in, Pebbles, come on in and sit on the couch. No, you think we did that? No. How many of you would say, get away from here, you filthy dog? <laughs> oh, oh, look, Pebbles. Oh, she's gotten all wet. Come on in, sweetie pie. Well, come on in. Let's cuddle on the couch. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, the, the door was shut to that dog. And when she came up like that, the door was shut to that dog for a good long period of time. You now you got to get some guards in the house. You got to keep the devils out. Keep the sewage out. Amen? Amen. Keep that stuff out. If, and, and listen, if, if you can't uh, keep yourself accountable, you need your family to keep you accountable. A amen? Amen? If you can't trust that the kids are, you know, you got little kids and they're, they're looking at everything under the sun on, on the computer, then you need to take hold of that. Do, look at me, Christian parents. Do you want your 10-year-old to be addicted to pornography? That's the, that's the age in which we're living. Do you want that? No, you got to shut the door to stuff. Say, we're, we're not going to have that stuff in our house. No. You say, well, that'd make me a tough parent. I want to be a friend to my kid. Your first responsibility, biblically, is to be a parent to your child. 
to be a Christian parent to your child, to bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I hope that you can be a friend as well, but the reality is spiritual responsibility rests upon Christian parents. Yeah. So we gotta get some spiritual guards in the house. Bob tells, I've heard him tell the testimony several times that, that he has passcodes for things on his equipment that only his wife knows and she doesn't tell him. Get some guards. Number five, get some spiritual goods in the house. I love this word from 2 Kings chapter four. Elisha replied to the woman who was about to go broke and bankrupt. She was broke and bankrupt. And Elisha said to the woman, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? In other words, what is there in the house that we can use to bring a miracle about? Now, she didn't have anything. She just had a little bit of oil. But that little bit of oil was something that God could work with. Now, God can work with anything. God can work from nothing. But the point is, we need to supply our homes with spiritual resources, spiritual, godly goods in the house. For one thing, Jesus warned that if you empty the house of demons, you'd better fill that emptiness of the house with good things. Don't leave the house empty. Don't get rid of the devil and leave the house empty. Fill up the house with good things or the devils might come back. Uh, Jesus taught that. Hmm? Don't leave the house empty. Fill it up with good things. And I I urge you to do that. Fill your house with good things, with spiritual music, with the word of God, with with reminders of of the Lord's presence and things like that. You say, well, I don't know. What what can I even watch on on TV if, if I can't watch all these raunchy soap operas that I love so much? What can I even watch? Uh, how many of you have tried our, our Right Now Media app? Anybody ever tried that? Try that. We have the Right Now Media app. It's available to everybody in our church, okay? We, the church pays a premium for it, for everybody in our church to have it. It is a, it is a Christian Bible gospel, you know, channel, basically. So... You know, you turn that on, watch all kinds of good things. Justin told me the other day, he said, I've been watching these Bible archaeology programs on there, and they, are, they have been really good. I found recently a, a, an old set on there of, 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 pre, uh, of a, a seminar on preaching by a well-known preacher, and I've listened to his preaching seminar, and I thought to myself, oh, oh, man, I wish I could do that. No, I didn't. I, I thought to myself, man, that's good. Those are good words. Help, that might help me tweak myself a little bit. You know, Bible studies on every imaginable topic. All kinds of good. You can have wicked content or godly content come into your, into your home. Okay, right? Right? Then you can get Andy Griffith too. You know, how many of you know Andy Griffith is a whole lot better than most of the junk that's going around today? How many, does everybody say, God bless Andy? You know, God bless Andy. Get some spiritual goods in the house. Sixthly, get some spiritual gatherings going in the house. Matthew 18, 20, where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Some prayer times, some devotion times, praying before meal, uh, praying at bedtime, um, uh, the, the, the issuance of morning blessings to one another in the name of the Lord. Gather. You don't have to have a three-hour prayer meeting every day in your house. That's not what I'm talking about. You could do that, but that's not what I'm, but I'm talking about spiritualizing your home and make it, making it a place where, where the focus is on the Lord and on Jesus and where God is pleased. And ultimately, if you pursue these processes, you will, number seven, this is our final point, you will get some spiritual glory in the house. And your house will be filled with the presence of God. Listen to this verse in this context, Matthew five fifteen. Jesus said, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Isn't that good? It gives light to everyone in the house. So as we think about 
our homes as believers, as children of God, the ultimate goal here is that our homes would be filled with the light of the presence and glory of God. Will that make everything perfect in your home and in your family? Sorry, Charlie, it will not. But you know, one of the most important lessons I've learned in all of life is this lesson. Even the bad days are a whole lot better with the Lord than without him. (laughs) Amen? Amen? And when the Lord is there, when his presence is there, when he is working, even in the midst of difficult times, the home becomes a place where the glory of God is alive and well, where God is working, where we sense his presence, and where he is receiving honor and glory from his people. So, are you ready to do some spring house cleaning? Yes? Yes? Can we stand together, please, everybody? How many of you this morning? Let's, let's bow our heads together, please, for just a moment across the room. Let me ask this question before we do anything else. Are there some of you here today, you've never received Jesus as your Savior? And today, you'd say, I want to come out of my, my, the lifestyle that I'm living, the life that I'm living. I want to live a new life in the will of God and the plan of God. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and he rose again from the dead. And today, I want to receive Jesus into my life, make him my Lord and Savior and begin a new life as a follower of Jesus Christ today. If that's you, could we bow our heads for just a minute, please, for a moment of privacy? If that's you, I want to receive Jesus into my life today, start a new life with him as my Lord, my leader. Lift your hand if that's you. Anybody across the room, just slip up your hand quickly right where you're standing. Please pray for me, Pastor. I want to start a new life with Jesus as my Lord and leader today. Anybody across the room, hold your hand up. I see you right there in the back. Is there anybody else here today? Slip up a hand quickly, quietly, right where you're standing. Pray for me, Pastor. I want to, I want to begin a new life with Jesus as my Lord, my Savior, my leader today. Anyone else? Pastor Bob, turn that way. Make your way right back to the back door, please. Anybody else? How many of you Christians would just simply say today, I want to dedicate my home. And maybe if if you're here with your family today, you may want to do this corporately. We want to dedicate our home to the Lord. A fresh dedication. Uh, How many of you want to say that today? Lift your hand, hold it up for a minute. We want to dedicate our home to the Lord. We want to dedicate our home to the Lord. I want us to get together in households for just a minute. It's 9.15. We got this new service schedule. We don't have much time left, but let's take a moment to get together in family units right where we are. Come on. If you have an extended family, welcome them into your circle there. Get together. If you want to step out so you can get in a circle, good. If you want to just join hands wherever you are, right there. And and let's take a moment right now to dedicate our homes to the Lord, to pray God's blessing upon our homes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A prayer of dedication. This dedication will begin the process today, perhaps, of some some deeper cleaning in the home. But this will begin the process, a dedication to the Lord. Rich, Lillard, just come on with all four of you. Come on. I'm going to ask our deacon, Dr. Rich Lillard, to lead us in a prayer, dedicating our homes to the Lord today. And uh, where's my, where's my... And let's all agree together as we pray. Is that that okay, Rich? I don't want to pull you from your family, so gather together. In fact, Rich and Jill, would you both just lead us in a prayer? Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's pray together right now. Hold on. Let's give us some...
we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your presence in our life, that you love us and you are here with us. And we just invite you into our home for each family that stands here today, that they would create an environment that welcomes you and that glorifies you and where you are exalted and lifted yes. high. Yes. Let us listen to your Holy Spirit as you lead us and guide us, as you whisper to us um, and direct us. Thank you for your kindness and your love and let us not miss out on any of that by putting up any barriers that would quench your spirit. And I pray that you would just help um, family, the head of the family, um, husbands and wives, parents, leaders in the home to rise up and to lead their children and to safeguard the technology that brings in um, so much and that you would give us wisdom and guidance um, and courage and boldness in doing that. And Lord God, help us as parents set godly examples. Help us make choices that the world might not support but we know those are the ones that are pleasing to you help our kids make decisions that help set examples for their peers help us just as a family come together to further your kingdom and to live life that's pleasing to you and we ask it in your name amen and everybody said amen amen and amen god bless you everyone have a great day in the lord in jesus name